Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we have an exciting topic to discuss, the quick return mechanism. And not just that, I will show you how to design it using CAD software, specifically Onshape. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Before we dive into the CAD part, let's quickly understand what the quick return mechanism is. In simple terms, it's a mechanical linkage that converts rotary motion into non-uniform reciprocating motion. It finds applications in various machines, such as shapers, mechanical presses, and even toy cars. What makes this mechanism interesting is that the forward stroke is faster than the return stroke, hence the term quick return. All right, so now let's use Onshape to design the quick return mechanism. I'll stop this animation and the assembly, switch over to my part studio, and um, open that sketch number one, a side sketch. Um, you can make a screenshot of, of this sketch and I will reproduce it in the next step. Here are six millimeters, here are eight. There is a three millimeter dimension. Okay, so I'll take this over here and start in an empty part studio. Press S, take the sketch tool, select the right plane, press N for a normal view to that, P to hide all planes, and start in millimeters with that um, center point rectangle from the origin, and the bottom dimension is 122, and, and the vertical dimension is 12 millimeters. Okay. Next is a two-point rectangle here. I start from that midpoint condition, go up here. So the horizontal dimension is 16, and the vertical dimension is 166. Okay. Like this. Um, next, again, for that axis, that pivot from here, um, this will align with the other ones. It has a vertical dimension of four millimeters and starts ten millimeters from that bottom face. And we will dimension the width with the other ones. So again, let me zoom in here. The next axis. Um, the wheel and the pin on that. So the, this dimension is 32, the width 8, that distance is 2 millimeters, that same 4 millimeters pin as here. Um, and again here, four millimeters. And um, vertical distance here of 72. And we can align that. I press V and take these two um, vertices. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the dovetail slider piece 
um, I start with a two point rectangle here. Place another one on that pin again. Dimension this here with 16. Here, 12. This is four. This here is six. Um, I place one line here. Dimension that with 22. Dimension here with three. Um, I got this in the middle here, so this point can be defined with the midpoint relation with that edge. So that is fully defined. Next thing, I will make a vertical constraint here. Okay, I'm going to pull that over here. Um, and another vertical constraint here. All right. And the bottom one as well. So now let's um, model the dovetail. I press L, Q for a construction line here with a midpoint. Give that an eight millimeter distance. Press L again, but this time uh, uh, line. Uh, I give this uh, an, an angular dimension of 18. And with H, I give it a horizontal constraint. Then I mirror across that line those two entities. All right. And that's it for that first sketch, which is the most complex one. So I'll exit the sketch, go into extrude, take that base plate, make a symmetric extrude of 102 millimeters. Keep that sketch visible. and extrude that part again with the symmetric off um, symmetric condition and 188 millimeters okay then again just this face here symmetric 18 millimeters, adding to those two parts. Okay, I'll call that part base and give it some gray, grayish appearance, white. Um, Next is the sliding part, this one here. So for that, I'm back in the extrude command and take that region, that one, those two only, symmetric, and 22, and as a new body. Okay, I'll rename that slider and change the appearance of that one to red. Next, um, a revolve of that region around 
that axis adding to the to our slider. Now I'll revolve a couple of times. First, that pin around that axis adding to our base. Then our disc around that same axis, this time as a new body. And adding to that, this region around that axis. Okay. I'll rename that disc and apply a different appearance. That one. And one more time, I revolve this bottom um, face, adding to our base. We can hide that sketch now and work on the next part. I go to the sketch command and place that on this face. Press N again to have a normal view like this. And um, start with one sketch, a uh, construction line from this midpoint up till, no, further up till here. Dimension that with uh, 172. And go into the slot command here. Pick that line. And search for that dimension here and give it a 16 millimeter diameter. Okay, we got that. With U, I can project those edges into my um, sketch. And next, I will draw another construction line here. From that point on, going down, I'll drop it there and dimension it with 60. And go back to the slot command, make a right click, say select other, and select this edge, the short one. And again, look for that angular dimension. Can't find it here. There? Yeah. Double click and give it a eight millimeter. All right, so we get that. Next, we need to make a cut here. I'll use just the center point rectangle, place that here and on that edge. And with I, I project that coincident here. And that's good enough. Now, let's go to the extrude command and select um, the faces. This one. Well, okay, that's it. Um, give that a four millimeter dimension depth. Go in that direction. Oh, I just noticed I uh, need to align that pin with that face. So um, I'll accept that because um, we did that well. But I need to return to that sketch number one and 
show the constraints. There is this vertical constraint. I'll erase that. And pull that out to here. So V here and there. Accept that. And that looks much better. I'll rename that part crank and change the appearance to um, that color here. So now I'll just um, apply a couple of chamfers. Here, one millimeter on that face, another one, four millimeters, those edges here, then one sketch on the disc, um, an arc, center point arc, center here with a radius of 26 horizontal constraint here um, I'll just um, dimension here the angle with 46, make that a construction geometry as well. All right, take the slot command, take that um, arc, accept that, go into the extrude, remove this face from the disc and make a circular pattern of a feature, take that axis three times, all right. Finally, one more chamfer, four millimeters, take these edges here. And the bottom ring here. Okay, and that's it for the part studio. Let's switch over to the assembly environment. Insert the whole part studio. And pull things apart. Right click on the base and fix that in its position. Then go here to the Revolute Mate, hover over that edge and over that one. Accept that. Then hover over that edge and this one. Um, then um, change to the slider mate connector. Take one of those edges here with the Z axis, the blue one, um, in this orientation, and that same one here, like this. Okay. So the slider mate makes this part run in this axis, all right? Now let me position that in here. And next we will apply two 
tangent mates, you find that here, tangent mate, I switch off the tangent um, propagation and pick that face here. And this one. All right. Accept that. And the next one, do that one more time here. Tangent mate. Take that uh, cylindrical face. And that one, oops. Um, switch that around again uncheck that box accept that and let's have a look let's animate our assembly here go to the loop And there you have it, folks, our quick return mechanism fully designed and animated using Onshape. That wraps up our video for today. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and enjoyed learning about the quick return mechanism and how to design it using Onshape. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated. I see you in the next video.